हूँ डॉक्टर शिप्रा गोयल एंड टूडेज टॉपिक इज वूल इंडस्ट्री इंडिया इज नाइन्थ लार्जेस्ट प्रोड्यूसर ऑफ वूल इन द वर्ल्ड विद अ ग्लोबल प्रोडक्शन एंड शेयर अराउंड टू परसेंट इंडिया वूल कंजम्पन इज एक्सपेक्टेड टू रीच टू सिक्सटी मिलियन के जीज बाय टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन एंड ट्वेंटी वूल इंडस्ट्री इज कंसनट्रेटेड मेनली इन पंजाब हरियाणा राजस्थान यूपी महाराष्ट्र एंड गुजरात Punjab accounts for about 35% of wool production units in India that is followed by then Maharashtra and Rajasthan if we see the uh, key export destinations for indian wool and woolen uh, wool blended products then it is us and eu indian exporters are geographically diversifying their exports to the other regions such as middle east latin america southeast asia east asia to increase their footprint globally If we see the status of uh, the year 2018-19, then export of woolen yarn fabrics and made-ups was valued at 221 million uh, per US dollar. An export of raw wool will be 1.2 million US dollar. Mm -hmm. In financial year, if we see then export of woolen yarn fabrics reached up to 125.13 million, while raw wool reached about 71. Thousand hundred and one point seven four U.S. dollar. If we see the major importers of woolen yarn fabrics and made-ups in financial year nineteen, they were China, that is around one twenty eight point nine six million dollar U.S. In Italy, if we say forty six point five eight million U.S. dollar. Japan twenty nine point four seven million U.S. dollar. Korea twenty four point seven seven million U.S. dollar. U.K. thirty five point seven nine million U.S. dollar and 6.83 million US dollar in US. In this year, export of woolen yarn fabrics and made-ups etc. reached around 181.23 million uh, US dollar. Woolen yarn fabrics export during April July 2020 was US dollar 28.85. And if we see the export of raw woolen value account around thirty nine thousand six hundred and ten from April to July two thousand twenty, there is a Central Wool Development Board which is formed by Ministry of Textiles, Government of India in nineteen eighty seven, and its main objective was developing the domestic wool textile industry by undertaking support programs during twelfth fifth. Year plan that is 2012 and 17. This board undertook initiatives to provide support to the entire value chain from shepherds to end users. So, from where this wool comes from? We all know it comes from sheep. So we can say the 90 percent of sheep around the world they produces wool. One sheep can produce between two to thirty pounds of wool per year. Wool from one sheep, then we call it as a fleece, and if it is produced by many sheep, then it is called a clip. Sheep inhabits inhabited arid regions of northern India in plains and hills, and the important places where the uh, which are the uh, which are the suitable uh, areas which are provide natural conditions for raising the fine woolen type of sheep. They are Saurashtra, North Gujarat, Kutch, Kashmir, foothill districts of Himachal Pradesh, that is Ludhiana and Gharwal. If we see the largest sheep population, then it is recorded at Plateau of Dakkar, Vindhya Mountains. The sheep of Kashmir is obtained fine wool in comparison to other places. Magra and Chokla are the best breeds from Bikaner, and Kuchi is the best breed from. Joria, that is at Rajasthan, which is famous for the superior type of carpet, carpet wool. If we see the types of wool, then there may be a fine wool. That means the sheep produces fleeces, which usually have the greatest value due to their smaller fiber diameter and versatility of use. Garments they are made from this fine wool are less likely to itch. Then there may be a hair wool that is sheep sheds their coats and produce no usable fibers that should be discarded, and their inclusions in a wool clip can contaminate the entire clip. Raising hair sheep with wool wool sheep can affect fleece quality. 
here will not accept the dye. Then medium type of wool raised more for meat than the fiber and it produced the lightest weight, least valuable fleeces. This type of wool usually made into blankets, sweater or socks. Then there may be a long wool that is sheep usually produce the heaviest fleeces because their fibers do coarser but they grow the longest. Hand spinners, they prefer wool from the long wool breeds because it is easier to spin. Then if we see the type of wool or we can say the proper and systematic classification according to territorial nomenclature, then there are several wool, wool types and that is based on their color. For example, I will say wool type Zoria that is of superior white color, Harmal that is of white gray color, Bikaneri that is of super white, Rajputana that is yellow gray, Bibric that is white grey, Marwar that is yellow grey and Vikinera type of wool is skin wool that is of common black colour. So we can say the colour of the wool it varies from species to species of the sheep and also on the climatic conditions of the area. Right. The real wool fibre is actually a bad conductor of heat. That is more heat it is, more heat is produced. So if we see the properties of a wool, then if first is durability. These wool they are naturally elastic and they returns back to their original form quickly after the pressure is removed. It retains heat due to the pockets of air that is formed by crimps in the wool and it functions as a temperature regulator so that it can protect the body both in the cold and warm condition. Then it can fold one third of its weight in water and still not be damp. Right? This wool it absorbs dyes deeply and so the color changes permanently except under extreme and prolonged feeding conditions. Then when it is exposed to the flame it chars or smolders it is self execution So when the flame is removed burning is stopped so it will not support combustion and that is why the wool blankets they are recommended for use in extinguishing small fires. Then they are not easily supported by the grease and oil. Right that is variability. That is wool does not wrinkle easily. Right it is resistant to wear and tear and it is lightweight and versatile. Then if we see uh, some of the other properties uh, which is showing uh, matlab means the chemical properties then the wool fiber it is actually made up of keratins. Keratins that is polymers of proteins and have higher sulfur contents. Number of polypeptide chains of amino acids are present and these amino acids they constitute the wool protein. And the amino acids which are produced uh, which are present here uh, maybe arginine, histine, lysine, alanine, methionine, threonine, thiosine, cysteine, leucine, isoleucine and valine. The, if we talk of a, a pure wool then it has affinity to dye absorption and easily twist. Its diameter is around 12 to 80 micrometer. It is hygroscopic, elastic and durable and as I have said not easily inflammable right then the uh, how the wool is processed or the processing of wool so the processing of wool is a very complicated process and then it starts with the first step that is shearing shearing means cutting the wool off so the removal of wool from the sheep it should be done carefully in a mild weather this uh, cutting the wool uh, is a recommended period is winter that is February to March and rainy season from August to September and the feed should be provided accurately that is rich grazing ground is available, sharpened sears must be used and sheep should be properly washed before shearing because 
It provides protection from natural enemies like ticks and mites, which either which otherwise infect the sheep and causes various diseases. So, this cutting the wool off or shearing is essential to promote the health of the sheep. Right. Then, uh, second uh, uh, step is cleaning the fleece. That is, when the shearing has been done, then the fleece which is immediately produced after shearing, it has a lot of contaminations. So, that need to be removed by hand or they are washed with the cold water in the water tanks and then they are pulled out from the tank for further processing. The wool from the back end of the ship, their legs and sometimes their belly is too full of manure to use, right? And these they are referred to as tags. These are removed first before washing the fleece and this process is known as skirting. As all the edges of the wool coat are removed, the fleeces are also shorted into various types like fine from coarse and short from long. Then next step is scoring. In this process, the wool undergoes several soaks and several soak and rinses to remove grease and dirt until the wash water remains clean. It is generally preferable to let wool soak and avoid agitation. Each subsequent wash is a weaker solution of soap or alkaline until the final wash is only water. So, between each wash, the wool is pressed and skews to remove excess water. And each wash, wash step, the wash water can be retained for subsequent batches of wool until the first wash becomes too dirty for the further use. Next is the uh, next step is drying. That is, washed wool should be kept in open sun for drying for around two to three days. Then, this washed and dried wool is then teased or picked. The beginning of the process of opening up the locks of the wool and turning it into a consistent web. The wool is put through a picker which opens the lock and blows the fluffy wool into a room. At the same time, a special spinning oil is added which helps the wool fibers slide against each other but also help them to stick together as a fine web through the processing. The next step is carding that is gently spreading the washed and dried wool in preparation for further processing. Then after carding, the process divides the web into small strips that we call as pencil rovings and these are collected on large spools on the end of the card. These spools of pencil roving will be placed on the spinning frame to make yarn. Then the roving as it comes off the card has no twist. It is held together by the oil and natural hooks that exist on the surface of the wool fiber. There is a spinning frame that will put the actual twist on the roving and turn it into yarn. Then this is collected on wooden bobbins. The frame we have is a small but it can spin up to 90 threads at one time. Then when the wooden bobbins are full of yarn, they are placed on a cone window and yarn is transferred to a paper corn for use in weaving and knitting machines. It could also be put into skeins of yarn which are the form that knitters like to use. Then the final step that is finishing. There are many ways for finishing the yarn that is sometimes it is sometimes necessary to remove the lubricant by washing which also sets the twist which allow the fibers to open up, fluff up and make a loftier yarn. Sometimes the wool is excuse me the uh, sometimes the wool is woven or knitted directly from the cone and is washed blocked in its final form as cloth, socks, sweater etc. Now I am providing here a link that is a wool processing from fleece to fabric when you and when we click on each step it 
shows its purpose and view the process in action. For example, I am clicking Boolean processing, then it will show. Many people think that woolen is woolen, but woolen is the name given to a particular type of wool processing. It's the simplest and shortest route. It's most tolerant of wool types, so you can put in both good quality wool and inferior quality wool and, and be confident you're going to make a decent yarn from it. In New Zealand, most of our wool is processed in this way because we are a major producer of carpet yarns, and most of the carpets you buy have gone through the woolen system. It's a very quick route, scouring, carding, spinning. And then a scoring. The scouring process. And that's essential because the sheep picks up contaminants such as dirt and also releases sweat and grease, much like if we didn't wash our hair for a year. Imagine what her hair would be like. Well, the sheep has that same issue. So that has to be removed and there's a high production washing process by a wool scour. There are wool scours scattered around New Zealand and they handle perhaps about five tonnes of wool an hour in their production to produce clean, scoured wool. White, free of contaminants, ready for processing. Guarding. A set of processes are required to convert that tangled mass of scoured wool into a nice, even, smooth yarn. There are variations in the number of steps required depending on whether you're making a yarn for us through the woolen system or a yarn through the worsted system. But irrespective of what the end product is, there is the need for the scoured wool to be opened and mixed and reorganised in a nice uniform strand. And we do that through a process called carding. Carding is a big machine, about uh, 20 metres long or longer, with tooth rollers that tease the fibres, open them up, and produce a nice even strand for the next stage. Then a spinning and twisting. The last step in producing a yarn is what we call spinning. And the ring spinning frame does that very efficiently. The strand is taken, it's twisted, it's drafted into a thinner entity and wound onto a package at high speed. And so you end up with what's called a singles yarn. The singles yarn is quite fine, relatively weak, particularly if it's wool. So it's common practice to combine two singles yarns together by twisting them together to form, say, a twofold yarn or higher as well. And there you have your yarn. I'm also providing the complete site where you will get this wool processing from fleece to fabric. Then there are woolen products as you we, as we all know, cloths, sweater, socks, muffler, right? Then there is a wool which is used for the carpets that is very re resilient and text resilient and texture allows it to very quickly recover from crushing or indenting that is caused by footsteps or furniture. This keeps the rug looking new, fresh for longer period of time. It has a natural ability to resist staining and swiring. 30% higher rate of stain resistant than even the best synthetic fiber. And this is because of natural light lanolin that coats the surface of the wool. And this coating, it helps stop dirt and stains from actually penetrating the wool, leaving any soiling on or near the surface. That's why spills on wool is very easy to clean. Then there are many insulating products, woolen covers that are made up of, made for appliances because of durability, water and flame resistance. There are many alternatives to the wool, that is cotton flannel, polyester fleece and other synthetic fibers wash easily, keep their colors bright, cost less and don't contribute to sheep cruelty that is mainly associated with the wool. If I am showing you the recent efforts, then there is an Indian Council of Agriculture Research, New Delhi, that has taken over management of wool production and trading since 1973. And they are appointed an authority, that is Sheep and Wool Development Officer. They will control whole production as well as the sale of the wool. Then there is a Wool and Woolens Export Promotion Council. Uh, this promotes, support and assists firm in entering the international markets. 
here it is found that uh, there is a registering authority that is basically promoting supporting and assisting firms in entering the international markets they provide invaluable assistance to indian exporters as well as importers buyers who choose india as their preferred sourcing destination for woolen products so this is a uh, uh, this wool and woolen export promotion council council under the administrative control of ministry of textile government of india it was established in year 1964 within the initiatives of honorable commerce minister of india shri manu bai saha and entrusted the responsibilities of promotion export of all type of wool and woolen acrylic blended products from india then there is a video that is uh, showing how uh, to harvest the wool right there is a uh, factory sheep factory and here it is showing how the wool is <laughs>
These are the references and some of the extra available sources which you can go through it for further or more extra information. Thank you.